The act of turning oneself upside down is one of the most impressive displays of human acrobatic ability. However, feats like these are not exactly easy to perform for the average person. Thankfully for us average humans, we have roller coasters. Since the invention of the modern coaster in 1884, engineers have been fascinated by the idea of adding inversions to their throw machines. And over time, coaster designers have gotten more and more creative with how they turn their riders upside down. This video aims to explore how the inversion has evolved, chronologically looking at every single inversion ever conceived, from the absurdly sketchy centrifugal railways of the 19th century, to the creatively twisty steel behemoths of today. Technically, the world's first roller coaster with an inversion was built in 1848, named the Centrifugal Railway. This French creation was a shuttle coaster with a tiny circular loop, just 13 feet in diameter. Unsurprisingly, the loop pulled extremely high g-forces and was not a very comfortable experience for riders. After the debut of what many consider to be the first modern roller coaster, L.A. Thompson Switchback Railway, looping coasters began to appear once again. The year 1895 saw the construction of Coney Island's Flip Flap Railway, a more modern take on the looping coaster featuring a circular loop 25 feet in diameter, which wasn't much of an improvement and still caused great discomfort to riders. More importantly, the ride's sole two-passenger car caused the flip-flap to have an abysmal hourly rider capacity, and therefore was not very profitable. Looping coasters soon fell out of style, and wouldn't become fashionable again for another 80 years. After a decade and a half of steel coaster innovation, the American ride manufacturing company Arrow Development designed and built Corkscrew at Knott's Berry Farm. While engineers at Arrow had been playing around with the loop concept for years, they opted to instead install a barrel rolled like corkscrew inversion on their first inverting coaster. The loop wouldn't be avoided for long though. Just one year later, Magic Mountain's Revolution became the first coaster of the modern era to contain a vertical loop. Made by the German manufacturer Anton Schwarzkopf, the ride opened just one week before Arrow's first looping coaster, Corkscrew at Cedar Point. Two years after Cedar Point's corkscrew, Arrow took the loop to the next level, creating one of the most famous inversions ever, the interlocking loops on the Loch Ness Monster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Nessie is the only ride operating today to feature this picturesque element. While Schwarzkopf continued to build coasters featuring just vertical loops, Arrow began to get more creative with their loop and corkscrew track pieces, essentially mashing half loops and half corkscrews together to create new inversions, not unlike your average roller coaster tycoon player. The first inversion they came up with was the Batwing, a half corkscrew into a half loop followed immediately by a half loop and a mirrored half corkscrew, causing the train to exit parallel to and in the opposite direction of the way it entered. This element was first installed on the defunct Orient Express at Worlds of Fun in 1980. The next inversion Arrow came up with was very similar to the Batwing, with the same half corkscrew, half loop, half loop start but the second half corkscrew exits so that the train continues to travel in the same direction that it entered the element. This inversion is called the bow tie, and only appears on one coaster, the legendary Dragon Mountain in Ontario's Marineland theme park. Meanwhile, on a certain island country in the Northwest Pacific Ocean, amusement manufacturers were beginning to build their own looping coasters. There were two major players in the Japanese steel coaster market, Togo, which we'll get to very shortly, and Meisho Amusement Machines, who after building a few coasters featuring vertical loops, shocked the world with Fuji Q Highland's infamous Moonsault Scramble. Opening the same year as Arrow's Dragon Mountain, this shuttle coaster is most famous for its insane max g-force of 6.5 g's, which it attained during its double inverting element, the world's first pretzel knot. The pretzel knot is very similar to a batwing, but upon entering the first element, the track crosses over the exiting track. The only other coaster with a pretzel knot is Banshee at Kings Island. Interestingly, the Cobra Roll, one of the most widely used inversions, wasn't invented until 1984. Perhaps even more surprisingly, it wasn't Arrow who came up with it. That honor goes to Vacoma, a Dutch ride manufacturing company who broke onto the scene with their Boomerang shuttle coaster model, four of which opened around the world in 1984. In a Cobra Roll, riders travel up a half loop, down through a half corkscrew, before inverting again via another half corkscrew and exiting via another half loop in the opposite direction of how they entered. But what if you chopped a Cobra roll in half, leaving only a half loop and a half corkscrew? 
Then you'd have what's called the Sidewinder, which was first featured on Arrow's 1984 creation Dragon, a ride that operated at Hong Kong's gorgeous Ocean Park until 2021. While all the inversions mentioned thus far have been a variation on the loop and corkscrew combination, 1985 would see the creation of a brand new inverting element, the Heartline Roll. The second inversion thus far to originate in Japan, it was first installed on the Togo Creation Ultra Twister at Tokyo Dome City, a pipeline roller coaster where the car is situated between the rails. In a Heartline Roll, the track rotates 360 degrees around an imaginary point in midair, which lines up with the heartline of the riders when the train goes through it. While the heartline roll was the main feature of Togo's Ultra Twister models of the late 80s and early 90s, it wouldn't be featured on another manufacturer's coaster until 1996, when Movie Park Germany opened the intimate built cop car chase. 1986 saw the debut of the surprisingly rare reverse sidewinder element, which is, well, a sidewinder in reverse. Whereas in a sidewinder, the train enters the half-loop part of the element first, here the train enters the half-corkscrew element first. Only nine coasters feature this element, the first to do so being Vekoma's Crazy Roller Coaster at Nanhu Amusement Park in China. In 1988, Togo put a unique twist on their Ultra Twister model, adding the world's first dive loop to their installation at Japan's World Food Festival, now found today at Rusutsu Resort in Hokkaido. This dive loop is essentially an inclined 180 degree heartline roll into a half loop. The next manufacturer to take a shot at the dive loop would be Bolliger and Mabillard, or B&M, a Swiss ride maker who burst onto the scene in the early 90s. Their 1993 sit-down looping coaster named Kumba at Busch Gardens Tampa was the second coaster ever to feature this inversion, which has become a staple of B&M loopers. Vacoma invented an odd inversion in 1989 called the Butterfly, which is essentially a half loop, followed by a diving half loop which twists 45 degrees, another 45 degree twisted half loop up, before heading down a final half loop, causing the train to exit in the same direction as it entered. It was only ever installed on two coasters, Godori at Park Astadi, and Blue Hawk, formerly known as Ninja at Six Flags Over Georgia. Remember what I said about B&M bursting onto the scene in the early 90s? Well, we've reached the time of bursting. Specifically, we've reached Batman the Ride. Opening at Six Flags Great America in 1992, the world's first inverted coaster featured two brand new inversions, the first and most impressive being the Zero-G Roll. This element is similar to a Heartline Roll, but it occurs at the top of an airtime hill, giving riders the sensation of inverting and floating at the same time. But Bolliger and Mabillard didn't stop there. They also invented the Wingover, an inversion found exclusively on their Batman the Ride clones. The Wingover is pretty much just a corkscrew, but I guess it's a little bit tighter? Almost like a zero-g roll and a corkscrew were fused together. B&M's Batman was a runaway success, and other manufacturers quickly realized that they had to step their game up to compete with the new kid on the block. Arrow's answer to B&M was the infamous Drakenfire, opening in 1992 at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. The ride featured two new inversions. The first, called a wraparound corkscrew, acted as the ride's first drop, and it was essentially a half corkscrew into a twisting, diving half loop that went all the way to the ground. Drakenfire also featured the world's first cutback inversion, an inversion similar to a corkscrew, but the second half is mirrored such that the riders head back in the opposite direction they came. While Arrow's Drakenfire tortured riders up in Virginia, 1993 saw the opening of B&M's most impressive looping machine yet, Kumba, located at the other Busch Gardens Park in Tampa. Featuring a massive loop encircling the lift hill, North America's first dive loop, and a giant cobra roll, the steel behemoth was already impressive enough, but B&M also included a brand new inversion, or at least a brand new variation on an already existing inversion. I'm talking about interlocking corkscrews, two corkscrews separated by a banked curve that flip over each other something that B&M installed on many of their looping coasters in the 90s and 2000s. Arrow also came up with an interesting variation on the corkscrew in 1993, the triple corkscrew, which is exactly what you think it is. Three corkscrews placed back to back to back. This was first installed on the South Korean coaster Fantasia Special, located at Tongdo Fantasia. 1994 sees the return of Vekoma to the timeline, and the debut of everyone's favorite head-smashing, brain-rattling, shamelessly clone coaster model. 
Yes, it's time to talk about Vekoma's Suspended Looping Coaster, or SLC, since it actually featured two world's first inversions. The first is the rollover, a double inverting element that begins with an ascending half loop into a half twist, into another half twist and a descending half loop, causing riders to exit in the same direction they entered. The other new inversion featured on the prototype SLC is the inline twist, an inversion that's very similar to a heartline roll, but here the track rotates around its own center spine instead of the rider's heartline. Oh, and you may have heard the term barrel roll used to describe these twisty inversions, especially if you've ever played Roller Coaster Tycoon. From what I understand, the term barrel roll is a broad term that could be used to describe either an inline twist or a heartline roll, although it's more commonly used as a substitute for a heartline roll. Kind of like how a square is a rectangle, but not vice versa, with the square being a specific type of rectangle and a heartline roll being a specific type of barrel roll and all that. Oh, and a JoJo roll is a heartline roll that occurs immediately after dispatching from the station. Does that make any sense? I'm sorry for using a math metaphor. One of the more controversial inversions on the timeline can be found on Disneyland Paris' Space Mountain, as there is a debate as to whether it counts as an inversion at all. The element in question is the tongue, which is a variation on the cutback seen earlier on Drakenfire with the track here exiting at a 150 degree angle from its entrance, as opposed to the full 180 on the cutback. There aren't many photos of this Vekoma design coaster with the lights on, so I'll let you be the judge as to whether it counts or not. Either way, Francis Space Mountain is the only coaster to ever feature a tongue, which is a ridiculous sentence to read out loud. Here it is, quite possibly B&M's most famous inversion, the Immelman. Named after an aircraft maneuver, which itself was named after the German pilot Lieutenant Max Immelmann, the Immelmann is an ascending half loop followed by a descending half roll, making it the opposite of a dive loop. It was first installed in 1996 on Busch Garden Tampa's inverted coaster Montu. The other new inversion invented by B&M in 1996 was the inclined loop. This self-explanatory inversion is simply, well, a tilted vertical loop and it was a popular inclusion on B&M stand-up coasters, being first installed on Mantis at Cedar Point. Okay, so this next inversion is so obscure that I almost left it off of the timeline. Called the Diving Turn, this inversion is a half heartline roll, followed by a downwards half corkscrew. While odds are you've built many diving turns in Roller Coaster Tycoon, you probably haven't ridden a coaster with one, as it was only ever found on the sparingly operated and currently defunct Intamin creation Sky Plaza Comet their one and only spiral coaster model. Speaking of Intamin, 1998 saw them blast onto the North American inversion scene quite literally with Volcano the Blast Coaster at King's Dominion. The world's first launched inverted coaster also featured a world's first inversion, the rollout. Similar to a Sidewinder, a rollout consists of an ascending vertical section of track, followed by a quarter loop into a half corkscrew. Volcano, may it rest in peace, was the only coaster to have ever featured this inversion. Another manufacturer enters the fray, this time being the American ride maker Premier Rides. Their 1999 Mr. Freeze twin launched coasters begin with an inside top hat. This element begins with a vertical section of track that twists 90 degrees before flipping riders upside down and heading back to Earth. Although B&M is famous for their Sea Serpent inversion on Six Flags Discovery Kingdom's Medusa, the first Sea Serpent was actually installed one year prior in 1999, by none other than Vekoma, and none other than a Disney park. That's right, we're talking about the rock and roller coaster at Disney's Hollywood MGM Studios Park. The Sea Serpent is very similar to the rollover found on Vekoma SLCs, but after the ascending half loop, the train executes two half corkscrews instead of two half twists before heading down a half loop to continue in the same direction. It's also kind of like a cobra roll, except the second half corkscrew is oriented such that riders continue to travel in the same direction. While this isn't a new inversion by any means, it's worth noting that the year 2000 saw the opening of King's Island Son of Beast, the first modern wooden roller coaster to feature an inversion, a 118 foot tall vertical loop. The ride was a complete disaster, yes, but notable nonetheless. One of the most bizarre coasters on this list with a suitably bizarre inversion is Vertical Velocity, known today as Flash Vertical Velocity. Opened in 2001 at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, this Intamin Impulse coaster originally had two vertical spikes, just like all the other Intamin Impulse coasters, and therefore no inversions. But after one season of operation, Six Flags and Intamin modified the ride to satisfy a height limit in the area, 
shortening the rear spike and altering the front spike such that it sat at a 45 degree angle, thus creating the twisted incline rollback inversion. Incredibly, another coaster opened with this exact same inversion in 2019, the just as insane Gerslauer Infinity Shuttle Coaster Mystic at Wallaby Roan Alps. In 2002, B&M came up with an inversion that could only be executed on their brand new flying coaster model. That's right, I'm talking about the Pretzel Loop, first seen on Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Over Georgia. A pretzel loop is essentially a loop that begins at the apex, with riders descending down on their backs before rising back up to the flying position. We stay in the year 2002 for, well, not exactly a new inversion per se, but another variation on an existing inversion, and an excuse to talk about the world's first coaster to break the 10 inversion barrier. The ride is the Intamin built Colossus at Thorpe Park, and the inversion is the Quad Heartline Roll, or four Heartline Rolls placed back to back to back to back. Not the most creative way to break the inversion record, but you can't deny Intamin's inverting efficiency. On the timeline thus far, the inversions have been pretty standard. A half loop here, a corkscrew there, a twist or two perhaps. Nothing you couldn't reasonably replicate in RCT2. But from 2004 on out, things are going to get weird. I'm talking a six-year-old playing Planet Coaster for the first time weird. Case in point is the next inversion on this list the Skyloop found on Mauer Ride's Skyloop models. This double inverting element actually begins on the ride's lift hill, where the train is pulled from vertical to upside down, before executing what is essentially an upside down heartline roll before heading down a half loop into the station. It was first installed on the very first Skyloop model, named Skywheel, at Skyline Park in Germany. But the real inverting star of 2004 was the Intamin made Storm Runner at Hershey Park, which featured not one, but two brand new inversions. The first is an element called the Cobra Loop, not to be confused with the Cobra Roll, and is basically just a really funky vertical loop. The first half of the loop is like any other loop, but the second half exits diagonally, causing the element to resemble something between, well, a loop and a Cobra Roll, hence the name. This element is incredibly similar to the Immelman, and is often mistaken as one. The second world's first inversion on Stormrunner is the Flying Snake Dive a half heart line roll into what can only be described as a twisting and diving drop to ground level. Both of these wacky inversions are exclusive to Hershey Storm Runner. Mauer rides weren't done with their weird lift hill inversions though. Just one year later in 2005, they opened their first X-Car coaster, G-Force at Drayton Manor in the UK, which features what is essentially a vertical loop for a lift hill. But G-Force also featured a brand new double inversion called the Bent Cuban 8. Like the Immelman, this inversion was named after an aerial maneuver, the Bent Cuban. This double inversion is essentially a sidewinder followed by an Immelman. Alright, it's time to get really bizarre, because in 2005, the American manufacturer SNS debuted the saxophone. Found on their Screaming Squirrel models, the first to open being the Sequoia Magic Loop at Italy's Gardaland. A saxophone is basically a tight drop that continues to curve under itself until the track is completely upside down. You can also think of it as two hairpin turns traveled vertically. Either way, it's an odd inversion, and no other coaster model has dared to attempt it. Intamin was back at it again in 2006, coming up with the Norwegian Loop, unsurprisingly first installed on the Norwegian coaster Speed Monster. This double inversion consists of a dive loop, followed immediately by an Immelman, and is basically the pretzel loop of sit-down coasters. One year later, Intamin came up with a new double corkscrew variation, called the Twisted Horseshoe Roll, and first found on the Western-themed Maverick at Cedar Point. The element consists of a corkscrew, a 180-degree turn, and a corkscrew in the opposite direction of the first. While Intamin never built another Twisted Horseshoe Roll, Mock Rides has built 10, as it's found on their popular Blue Fire Mega Coaster model. 2010 saw the debut of one of the most bizarre inversions ever conceived, the Scorpion Tail. A brainchild of the twisted minds over at the Russian amusement firm Pax Company, it acts as the turnaround element for the shuttle coaster Cobra, located at Connyland in Switzerland, and is essentially just an inverted stretch of inclined track. Gerslauer Amusement Rides, the German manufacturer behind the popular Eurofighter model, the first of which was built in 2003, surprisingly doesn't make it onto the timeline until 2011, when they debuted their biggest and baddest Eurofighter to date. Opening at Fuji-Q Highland in Japan, Gerslauer's Takabisha didn't just feature the world's steepest first drop, it also featured the world's first banana roll. 
This twisty inversion is kind of like a cobra roll, but the track never fully levels out in the middle. Interestingly, this element can be considered either one or two inversions, depending on how much the track levels out. It's been a while since we've seen B&M on the timeline, a whole decade in fact, but 2012 saw their triumphant return to inversion ingenuity with the dive drop, first installed on Thorpe Park Swarm, and feature prominently as the first drop on the majority of their wing coasters. The dive drop consists of an inline twist followed by a large half loop. In 2013, over a decade after Son of Beast opened at Kings Island, a daring new manufacturer took a crack at adding inversions to a wooden coaster. Yep, it's time for the arrival of Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC, and their groundbreaking topper track wooden coaster Outlaw Run. Opening at Missouri's Silver Dollar City, Outlaw Run is famous for its double heartline roll finale. The first on a wooden coaster, obviously, but it gets in the timeline for its first inversion, what has been called an overbanked inversion. In this inversion, the track is banked past 135 degrees to the top of a hill, before twisting in the other direction on the way down the hill. The next year saw RMC breaking out another new inversion on another new topper track woody. That woody was Goliath at Six Flags Great America, and that inversion was the Zero-G Stall. The inversion that has become synonymous with RMCs. The Zero-G Stall begins like a Zero-G roll, with the track twisting 180 degrees as the train rises up into a hill. But at the apex of the hill, the track levels out, stalling riders in this inverted position, before twisting back to level on the way down. But that wasn't the only inversion RMC cooked up in 2014, which saw the opening of Medusa Steel Coaster at Six Flags Mexico, a ride that featured the world's first barrel roll down drop. This inversion consists of a banked curve leading directly into a descending barrel roll, which also acts as Medusa Steel Coaster's first drop. We interrupt the RMC party with some more B&M wing coaster action, as the opening of Hyde Park's Flug der Damonen in 2014 brought about a brand new inversion. This odd double inverting element called the Demonic Knot is a zero G roll, followed by a 270 degree turn into another zero G roll that passes over the entrance of the first roll, forming a mess of track that resembles a rather sinister knot. So sinister in fact that no other coaster features this element. Finland joined the small list of European countries with an inversion named after them in 2016, when the Finnish loop appeared on the Gerslauer Infinity Coaster Junker. Despite containing two distinct elements, a twisting dive drop into an elongated vertical loop, the dive drop doesn't count as an inversion, so the Finnish loop is actually just a single inversion, unlike its Norwegian cousin. Junker wasn't the only coaster debuting a world's first inversion in 2015. Over in the States, the Maniacal Mines at Lagoon unveiled Cannibal, a monstrous looping coaster built in-house. And if you're gonna come up with a brand new inversion in-house, you might as well name it after your park, right? Hence the Lagoon Roll, which is basically a double inline twist, but with the second twist rotating in the opposite direction of the first. Yet another 2015 inversion comes courtesy of RMC who opened their dueling creation, Twisted Colossus, at Six Flags Magic Mountain, replacing the iconic Colossus wooden coaster. The unique inversion they came up with was the Top Gun Stall, a zero-g stall placed directly over an airtime hill, causing the two trains to mimic this famous maneuver from the movie Top Gun. This makes the Top Gun Stall the only inversion on this list dependent on the proximity of two trains and two sections of track. RMC didn't slow down for the next operating season, coming up with two brand new inversions. The first is the Step Up Underflip, originally found on Joker at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom, which is basically a zero-g roll that doesn't fully complete its roll. We'll call it a 270 degree roll that transitions directly into a banked, curving drop. RMC came up with so many inversions in such a short amount of time that this next inversion doesn't actually have an official name yet. First seen on Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom, this inversion, affectionately known as a zero-g roll variant, is very similar to the Step Up Underflip being a 270 degree zero G roll that transitions into a banked curve. But it's much lower to the ground, so it doesn't have the twisting drop seen in the step up underflip. 2018 sees Gerslauer's return to the timeline with the negative G stall loop. And man, these inversions are really getting harder and harder to describe. Found on Knott's Berry Farm's hang time, this inversion is similar to a finish loop, but instead of a twisting drop into a vertical loop, it's a twisting drop into an extended sidewinder causing the train to exit in the opposite direction that it entered. After last appearing on the timeline in 2005 with everyone's favorite inversion, the saxophone, 
SNS blasts back onto the scene in 2019, unveiling two new inversions on their compressed air launch coaster Max Force at Six Flags Great America. The first new inversion is a double inversion called the Dog Tongue, and it's really weird. It's essentially a large half loop that rolls over into a 90 degree bank turn before rolling back over and dropping down another oddly angled half loop. The second new inversion is the Max Dive Loop, and it's not any less bizarre than the Dog Tongue. It's basically what happens when you mash together a zero-g roll and a dive loop, with a wacky bank section of track between the two. SNS really outdid themselves in 2019. Along with Max Force, they built Steel Current at Kennywood, a ride that broke the North American record for the most inversions on a coaster with nine. They went all out with the uncommon inversions too, throwing riders through a sea serpent, a zero-g stall, a banana roll, a cutback, and a world's first inversion named the Drakenfire Dive Drop. Obviously inspired by the wraparound corkscrew found on the defunct Drakenfire, it's sort of a combination of that and the dive drop seen earlier on B&M's wing coasters, being not quite a corkscrew yet not quite a heartline roll into a diving plunge. B&M's final appearance in the timeline comes in 2019 with their record-breaking dive machine Yukon Striker at Canada's Wonderland. Yukon Striker featured the world's first zero-g winder, a combination of a zero-g roll and a sidewinder, and looks a bit like a half loop into a half twist. RMC's final entry, for now, is courtesy of the 2019 coaster Untamed at Wallaby Holland. Possibly their most diabolical invention yet, the inversion is named the Double Inverting Stall, and is essentially a 270 degree zero-g roll, a small section of track banked at 90 degrees, then another 270 degree zero-g roll in the opposite direction. Over 20 years since their last appearance on the timeline, it's time to end the list with the return of the king himself, an early inversion pioneer who fell on hard times but has been making a massive comeback as of late. Yep, it's time to welcome back Vacoma and introduce their brand new Top Gun launch coaster model, the first of which opened in 2021 at a park in China. This model features a crazy looking new inversion called the Rollover Camelback. It begins much like an inside top hat, but negotiates an inline twist at the apex before diving back down to earth. 175 years and 58 different inversions later, we made it to the present day. In the end, b and is the inversion king, having opened nine coasters with the world's first inversion. While Arrow is out of the inversion race, close trailing Vacoma may just take the inversion crown one day, with Intamin and RMC also in close striking distance. Unfortunately for me, that also means that this video will probably become rapidly outdated. SNS's rumored soon-to-be-built Axis coaster alone will likely introduce a bunch of never-before-seen inversions, and I doubt that RMC or Gerslauer will slow down their inversion creating anytime soon. Also, while I tried my best to include every single notable inversion, there's a chance I missed one or two, so let me know in the comments below if you've noticed any I've left off. I purposefully left out a few half inversions, like the Fly to Lie and Vacoma's Flying Dutchman model, as well as some inversions I considered redundant, such as the double heartline roll. In all honesty, I'm not sure how many more inversions I could include if I tried. Putting together this video nearly broke me and my PC. I want to give a big thanks to Mick and Man's RCT station for suggesting this video. If you have a video you want to see, let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you made it this far, why not leave a like, and consider subscribing and joining the Jane Addy community. As always, thanks so much for watching.